What's up, Rockstar? Coach Betty Rocker here. Welcome to my little simple home gym setup. I've built up this home gym over the years. I have a few pieces of equipment that have helped me really progress with my strength goals when I wanted to lift heavier. So obviously I've got a squat cage, some barbells and weight plates. I've got a full complement of dumbbells some um, exercise balls, all of those types of things are really helpful when you are doing heavier lifting. Uh, so again, slowly build up your collection over time. In today's workout, we are not gonna be using all of this equipment. We're gonna be mostly working with um, dumbbells today. I'm gonna be using a barbell for one move, but I'll show you how to do it with dumbbells. I'm also gonna be utilizing my bench as well as my jump box. Now you could use your couch and an ottoman and get the same effect if you're training at home. Um, and then one thing we're doing today is chin-ups. Now, as you can see, I'm, I'm using a stretchy band that's gonna give me some assistance for my chin-ups. So if you don't have a chin-up bar, you've got a couple alternatives. A chin-up is basically, you know, a pull down. We also have the pull up, uh, also, which is a pull down. So the chin up is when your hands face forward. The pull up is when your hands face away. It's just a slight variation in the muscles that work. So for my chin up, I'm gonna be using my stretchy band attached to the, the squat cage. However, you can also work similar muscles by affixing a stretchy band to a surface above you and using it to pull down so that you can start working those same muscles in your back as well as your biceps. The tri the, this chin up actually really works the, the biceps as well. If you don't have this option and you do have something like TRX straps, you could also um, work with your TRX straps and work on a leaning pull up like this or even a bicep curl where you're pulling yourself up towards your face. This is also a great way to work some of the same muscle groups. And if you don't have either of those, you could take two high chairs in your house and lay a bar across them or even a broom handle and just work on pulling yourself up. You might be in a, like a knee bent position or even kneeling from the floor just to work those muscle groups. If all else fails, you can just default to doing an underhand row and then switching to bicep curls. So you hit all the same muscle groups that we'll be doing with the chin up. You have lots of options. So let's go ahead and get started with a nice full body warm up and bend your knees. Come on out to a tall plank. You can come down into a kneeling plank or stay tall. Give me a push up and we're gonna come back. Walk your hands back for this first one. Stand tall, sweep the arms up, bend the knees, walk your hands out. Give me a push up kneeling or on your toes, walk your hands back. Come on up, sweep the arms up, stretch a little bit. Come on down, good, push it up. This time, walk your feet in to meet your hands. Come on up into a body squat, squeeze the butt, open the chest, bend the knees, step it back. Give me another push up, good. Step the feet in, come on up nice and strong, good work. Bend the knees, step it back. Push it up, keeping that core nice and tight. Step your feet in, load the weight in your heels. Body squat up. Two more like this. Step it back, push it up. Step it forward. Last one, nice work, come on. Down, step it out, push it up. Step it forward. Now here we're just gonna do some body squats in place. So squat it back, keeping your chest high keeping your knees tracking in line with your toes. I'm noticing I'm in kind of a little bit of a small sumo squat stance, which feels nice and supportive. Do what feels good for you. Keep those knees tracking directly over the toes. Keep your shoulders back, keep your chest up. Core stays nice and braced in our squats. Last two, last one. Let's go ahead and grab a towel or stretchy band. Something really simple here, we just wanna do a little shoulder mobility and opening here. So we're just gonna put some tension between our hands. You can do this with a towel, really totally fine. You can use pretty much anything. We're just gonna do circles around our body. You can bend at the waist a little bit here, but you're gonna keep your arms the same distance away from each other as you do these circles. Just allowing the muscles of your rotator cuff to wake up, open up, and feel a little activation. Let's go the other direction. Good work. Open, open, good. Open, 
keep breathing. Great job. All right, forward and back. You can come just this far back or you can come all the way back, your choice. Let your body open up, keep a nice tension in the band. Last two, last one, good. You can set that off to the side. We're gonna get into our first movement and make sure that you have, you could have a whiteboard like I do. You could have a sheet of paper, uh, tracking, something that you can use for tracking, how many reps you do, how much weight you use for each of these movements. I like to keep track because I want you to do this workout again in a week. So we wanna to continue to progress with these movements and either increase the amount of reps we do or increase the amount of weight we do. So I'm gonna start, since this is the first move and it's gonna be a single leg movement, I'm gonna start with something fairly conservative for my legs. It's a staggered deadlift. So the shoulders are gonna roll back and down in their sockets and I'm gonna step my right leg forward, placing most of my weight on it. My left leg is gonna come back behind me and I'm just gonna be up on my toe, using that as a balance point. From here, I'm gonna send my hips back, keeping my weighted objects in close to my shins. And then I'm gonna drive forward with my hips. Good. As you hinge your hips back, engage your core. Again, this very first set is a warm up set. And I want you to be really conservative with this since this is single leg movements. We wanna really warm up this leg so that we can maximize our workout today. Great job. Let's do two more on this leg. Hinge the hip back as if you were shutting a car door with your butt, keeping your front standing leg fairly stable. Let's switch and bring that left foot forward, putting most of the weight on it. Send your right foot back with just a little bit of weight there so that you have a nice balance point. Again, keep your shoulders back, brace your core. Really keep that core braced as you hinge your hips back. Don't let your weighted objects come out in front of your body. Keep them touching your shin. You come down to a flat back, use the strength of your glutes and the back of your hamstrings to pull you back up. Nice, you sh this, these are the muscle groups that you will feel if you are performing this correctly. You should not feel this in your back. It shouldn't be painful. Of course, your back is definitely participating in this as a strength piece. We're gonna keep that back nice and flat. We're not gonna round the back at all. Good. Last one with this nice light warm up set. Good work. Go ahead and set your weighted objects down by bending the knees and feel free to write down the warm up set. Very important to do these warm up sets, especially if it's the first real lifting move of the day and we're planning to go a lot heavier. So I just did a very short set there. And then we're gonna go up. I'm gonna choose a heavier set of dumbbells and I'm gonna go up and resistance. And in this next set, we're gonna do the same move again. In this next set, I'm going to try to hit between eight to 12 reps. And since this is my first week doing this workout, I'm gonna be calibrating how much, this, how much weight is appropriate. If it's really easy for me to hit 12 reps, well, I might wanna go a little bit heavier in my resistance so that I can challenge myself a little bit more as long as I'm within that eight to 12 rep range. If the weight you select makes it really hard to even hit eight reps, go a little bit lower. So I'm gonna start with my right leg forward, shoulders back and down, core engaged. My left foot is back, kick standing. And once again, I'm gonna hinge my hips back, keeping the core braced. Glutes really fire up to pull us back to a straight upright position. Nice job. Really work on keeping your hips level and square. Don't let one side of your pelvis rotate up high. That's gonna torque your back. So we're really using that back leg as a kickstand to help us keep our pelvis stable, help us engage and utilize the strength of our core. This is a really important um, integration of a lot of different muscle groups. Your core is working, your glutes are working, your legs are working your back, which is part of your core, is clearly working. And we've also got the component of the shoulders and arms. So we really wanna keep the weight in close to the shins. Really great work. I've got two to go here. 
Last one for me. Feel free to go beyond me. Feel free to stop before me. Remember, this is your rep range with the amount of weight that you have available that you've selected to calibrate with for your first set. Switching legs when you're ready. Once more, engaging the core. Crown up tall, shoulders back. Sending the hips back, nice flat back and we powerfully drive up through the glutes. Excellent work. Again, stay focused. Let your head and neck follow your back. So your head and neck are a part of your spine. So we wanna have, we don't wanna be cranking our head up or looking down. We wanna have a nice neutral straight line all the way from your pelvis up through the crown of your head. Good work. Hang in there. These single leg movements are tough and they're so effective for building that strength. Now, when you're done, bend your knees, set down your weighted objects, write down your reps. And I noticed that I was really right at the top of the rep range for myself. And I probably could have done a few more. So I am gonna go up a little bit more in weight. Be where you're at. Remember, if you're within that eight to 12 rep range and you're feeling pretty strong there, stay there. Like if you're like me and you're like, I could still go heavier, go ahead and go up a little bit, try it out. Uh, this is one of the nice things about slowly building up your collection of assorted weighted objects in your home gym. Uh, it's nice to have a real variety of things to play with so that you can continue to develop strength. <sighs> it's also nice to have a dog. Hi. He's guarding my weights. Okay, we've got two more sets of those to go. So give yourself a quick breather. Shake your legs out a little bit. Maybe you wanna do some leg swings. Whatever feels good. Just remember we want a quick breather in between these sets. Roll the shoulders back. When you're ready, you can bend your knees, pick the weights up safely. Shoulders back and down, core is braced. And I'm gonna start with my right leg forward. Left leg kick stands back, not much weight on that left foot. It's really there for stability for me. And then I'm gonna hinge my hips back, keeping my back straight, core braced, weighted objects in close to my shins. And I'm powering up, feeling that fulcrum point at the, at the center of my glutes. Great job. I'm definitely going slower this round. I've chosen a more, I guess, appropriate working set weight for myself or if I wanna be in this rep range. So I'm going a little slower, really focusing on keeping my pelvis flat and stable. I'm gonna do one more. Please finish your set wherever you are and I'm gonna to switch to the other leg. Join me when you're ready. Shoulders back and down, core braced. Most of the weight in the front leg as we inch the hips back and powerfully drive up. Really important to keep those weighted objects in close to the shins, really pay attention to that. Don't let them drift out. That's where you're gonna hurt your back. And I know you don't want that. Now, when do you know when you're done? Well, it's when you think you could probably maybe do two more reps, one to two more reps. Not total failure. We want to leave just a couple in the tank. <sighs> but really make sure that you've got something that's challenging you for your weight amount. <sighs> I'm going to do one more. We want to match our rep count on both sides. Write down the amount of weight you used the amount of reps you hit. And we've got one last set of these to go. So in between these, I like to do some little glute stretches. You maybe want to come in and do a, like a quick pigeon stretch where you've got your leg out. You could also do a figure four stretch where you've crossed over and you're just pulling your knee back towards you. All of these things can be really valuable and just keep you feeling warm and limber in between these lifts. Feel free to have water, reset yourself, 
we're gonna hit one more, one more set of these. All right, feel free to adjust your weight up or down as needed. Shoulders back and down, take more rest as needed. We wanna be recovered enough to really give it our all each set. So again, I'm gonna start with that right leg leading. Your choice, you can start with right or left, it's fine. Just make sure that you've got a solid amount of your weight in that standing front leg. Send your hips back, brace your core, powerfully drive up. Great job. Nice flat back, neutral spine with that neck and head. Keep your shoulders back in their sockets. You got this. When you're ready to switch legs, please feel free to do so. You can take a quick breather in between and then begin again on the other leg. Be mindful of your form. This is your last set. Keeping those weighted objects in close to the shins. Keeping the back flat. Great job. When you're done, bend your knees, set down your weighted objects, and don't forget to write down and record your reps. And of course, if you changed weight at all, that's good too. I'm gonna go ahead and have some fluid. I'm having a little rock and restore some of my freeform aminos to help fuel my muscles with those aminos they need for muscle protein synthesis. Unlike a dietary protein that your body has to break down into the amino acids, you can enjoy a free form amino during a workout because it doesn't have like a burden for your stomach has to like break anything down. It's all ready to go. So it's a nice thing to use as a supplement. As long as you're fueling before and after your workouts effectively, uh, you don't have to use supplements. They're just a bonus. Keep that in mind. Mm. All right, moving on. We're gonna work on a military press now. So a really strict shoulder press. Um, the alternative to this is a push press where you give yourself a little bit of momentum by bending your knees and powering up with your bar or your dumbbells. I am gonna be grabbing uh, a barbell for this one. Uh, it depends on what availability you have for how much your barbells weigh. I've got a 45 and a 35 pound barbell for me. I'll be starting out with a 35 pound barbell because that works best for me. However, I could also use dumbbells and keep my shoulders back, imagining I had a straight bar in front of me and just pressing straight up overhead using the dumbbells. So this is a valid and awesome option. Really totally your choice of what you wanna do. I really enjoy working with barbells as, as we start to get stronger, distributing weight across a bar gives you a better opportunity to support yourself as you're pressing, lifting, squatting, all of those different things. Um, it's quite hard to hold two very heavy dumbbells on your shoulders, for instance. So if you are interested in this type of progression, that's something to think about. So if you're holding your bar, you're gonna come underneath it and get it balanced just across your chest with your palms facing out, same way you would if you were holding your dumbbells. Your elbows are gonna tuck in to your ribcage. You're gonna to totally uh, engage your core here. So we're not gonna have an arched back, very important. Imagine you were in a plank pose or you were in blueberry spine standing where you had your core tight. And then we're gonna go ahead and press up overhead. Nice, I want eight to 12 reps here. So again, this is a calibration. We did some push-ups and some band mobility for our shoulders that first round when we were warming up. So you may feel like you've got a little bit lighter weight you're starting with, or you may feel like this is just right. You may wanna go up, this is your calibration. So just check it out. Great job. You don't have to rush, keep that core tight.
when you get to the when you get to the top of your rep range and your set, make sure you set everything back down with control. And we're gonna write down what we did, how much weight we used, and whoo, how many reps we did. Now I was for this one, I'll just share some insight with you that I have when I'm training. I was right at the top of the rep range at 12 reps, but I feel like that's gonna be perfect for me this first week of this workout. I didn't feel like I wanted to add any more weight to this. I feel like it would be a real struggle. Um, that could be where my energy's at today. That could be where I'm at in my cycle. Um, there's a lot of different variables that will just like let you sort of like work with your body. Uh, so just listen to your body. So we know we have two more sets of these to go. Keep breathing. You got this. <sighs> Hydrate. Maybe you want to do some arm sweeps. Maybe you want to do some stretches, whatever feels supportive. <sighs> want to rest in between our sets. All right, when you feel recovered, you can go ahead and start again. We do another set of those presses. So once again, we're gonna bring the elbows in close to our body. If you're holding dumbbells, your dumbbells are gonna come up, straight back down. You're gonna keep your shoulders back. Good. I'm gonna use my mirror this set to watch my form something that I highly recommend. If you have a mirror handy, a full length mirror, you can watch yourself to check out how you're doing. Let's go. Eight to 12 reps. You got this. Stay focused, keep your core tight. You don't have to rush. And that was it for me. Replace your weights either down on the floor by bending the knees or re-racking a barbell with control. Record your Reps, if you made any changes to the amount of resistance you used, record that as well. Let's take a quick breather. Mm. Oh, stretching my shoulders open. Nice little neck stretch you can do is hook your hands below your neck and pull down on the skin below your collarbone and then lean your head back. Same thing on the other side. We're pulling your hands, using your hands to pull down the skin below your left collarbone and leaning your head back to the right. Same thing on the other side. Just some nice things to open up your neck. Got one set left of these to go. Here we go. Let's do this. Please feel free to take additional rest if you don't feel like you're fully recovered yet. I'm gonna balance my barbell across the top of my chest. Elbows are tucked into my body. Core is tight. And then we press up. If you're using a bar, <laughs> there is sort of a little, uh, sort of a sway back you almost do. It's very small, but you're probably watching me. I'm just getting my face out of the way of the bar, but the bar is pretty much going straight up and down. Nice. Come on. You got this. Keep that core tight. Last set of these. Good. When you're done, you can re-rack your weight, give your arms a break, write down your reps. And I'm gonna put away my barbell while I'm resting and recovering before our next movement. 
so that it's not in my way. If you had dumbbells, feel free to get them out of the way. My gym, my home gym is about a 12 by 12 or 12 by 13 space. Pretty, you can really do a lot with a small amount of space. <sighs> mm. All right, our next, our next sequence is dumbbell step ups. So I'm gonna use one of my boxes. You could use a bench, you could use ottoman. You've seen me do with these uh, with an ottoman a ton. Um, what I'd like is for your box or elevated surface to be around the height of your knee. This one's just a fraction taller than my knee. I'm totally okay with that. Um, I just don't want you stepping up like to here, especially when you're holding weight, as that can just compromise your back a little bit. So why don't you find your elevated surface? And we're gonna be doing this with the chin-up. We're gonna be taking little rests in between, but we're gonna do the chin-up in between. So I want you to also set up that station. If you're planning to use dumbbells with the underhand row and then some chin-ups, grab the dumbbells you want for that. If you're using your TRX or you're pulling down towards your feet with your band, that's great. Just have that set up nearby. All right, I'm gonna start out with what I think will be an effective amount of weight for my step ups. And I'm gonna do one leg at a time. So I'm gonna start, you can have your weights up on your shoulders, by the way, or down at your sides. I'm gonna start out with my left leg and I'm gonna step up, balancing through my foot, step down with control, keeping the core engaged. Up again and down. Eight to 12 is what I'd like you to do here as well. Use control here fully, stand and extend your hips at the top. Great job. Notice that you're really driving through your entire foot as you do this. You don't wanna be up on your toe. You wanna to be very balanced through your entire foot. You wanna make sure that your knee feels nice and stable and secure. This thing is definitely getting me winded already. <laughs> These are tough. When you feel like you get to the top of your rep range, you can go ahead and switch legs. It's for right here for me. I'm gonna stand up on my elevated surface with both feet and I'm gonna start with the other leg. Great job. Come on, you got this. Stay focused. Sometimes I don't talk as much during these because <laughs> I'm focused on a lot of things too. All right, let's step it down. You can set your weighted objects down right on that elevated surface when you're done. Go ahead and write down your reps and how much weight you used. Now with your chin-ups, I don't have a rep range for you. This is something I want you to work on and you're gonna do as many reps as possible basically. Uh, if you're doing a dumbbell variation, um, you know, maybe try to hit 10 at least of the rows and then 10 at least of the curl if you're doing that. If you're working on chin-ups with me, let's go ahead and get in position. Like I said, I'm gonna use it, I'm gonna be doing some assisted chin-ups today. So I'm gonna be using my strap that I have attached up here. My hands are gonna face my face for a chin-up. A pull-up, you're gonna have them facing away. So I want you to hang fully extend it, engage your core, and then pull yourself up so that your chest comes all the way up to the pull-up bar. That counts as one rep. Good. Keep your body nice and straight. 
Don't let it sway around. That's one of the challenges. If you're finding that this is just too much, you can also practice coming to a 90 degree bend and holding a hang position. That got me tired pretty fast. <laughs> do as many as you can. Don't feel like you're supposed to do a million of these or some specific number. Your body will tell you when it's done. They're really challenging. That's why they're so great to work on. Um, and I love the option of the assisted band. When I'm working on these every week, I'll work my way through my green band, which gives me the most assistance, all the way up to my purple band, which gives me way less assistance, to my black band, which gives me no assistance. And then those weeks, I'll usually try doing a couple body weight as well to build that strength, right? It's really fun. That's part of progressive overload, right? There's another way to do progressive overload than just adding more weight to your dumbbells or your barbells. I'm gonna take a quick breather, then we're gonna hit our uh, step ups again. Feel free to write down your chin ups and I'm gonna write down what weight of assisted band I use, like my green band. I basically just make a note of that on my tracker and I write down my reps. No matter where we are, we always have the opportunity to get stronger, right? Myself included, oh my gosh. Mm. Uh, whew. Okay, moving back to our step ups. I liked the amount of weight that I used in the last set. I was right in the middle of the range, so I'm gonna stick with that. Shoulders stay back and down in their sockets, keeping our weight balanced correctly, core is engaged. And I'll start with the right leg this time. Stepping up with control, left foot is behind me. You can tap your left foot down onto the box if that feels good or supportive. You can also just let it sort of stay out behind you. Really balance, think about maybe, think about your heel if you have a tendency to sort of pitch forward onto your toe here. You really want even weight distribution here, but make sure that you're not pitching up onto your toe. Good. Whew. Try to hit the same number of reps as you did last time. Nice and steady pace here. If you changed weight or went up in weight, you may hit less reps. That's totally normal. That's what we're looking for as we progress. You may want to progress this week. You may want to progress next week. You'll know when to progress when you're easily hitting 12 or more reps with the amount of weight you've chosen. I'm going to switch sides now using my left foot. You switch when you're ready. Our pace may be a little different. We're going to have different amounts of weight we're using. This workout style is very subjective to each of us. Keep your core engaged. Keep your shoulders back. Weight distribution. Keep thinking through all of these cues. As we start to get tired, it's easy to get sloppy and just start focusing on just how many reps you did. One thing I start to notice when holding dumbbells is that my wrists get tired, my forearms get tired. So it's nice to have an alternative way to hold them. Last one for me. When you're done, set down your weighted objects. And we're gonna move into our second set of chin-ups or whatever alternative variation you're taking to strengthen those muscle groups. But first, give yourself a breather. Write down your step-up reps. A lot of single leg movement in today's workout, which I love. Uh, super fun. <laughs> you're doing great. All right, are we ready? Let's get ready for our chin-ups. I'm gonna climb up <laughs> my squat cage here, getting my foot in the stirrup, palms face me, and my hands are just about shoulder width or maybe a little bit wider. I'm gonna bring my body straight. I'm gonna engage my core. I'm not gonna sway back and forth, or I'm gonna work on minimizing the swaying, 
and I'm gonna stop talking so I can focus on my breathing. Get through your reps. Looking good, looking strong. Write them down when you get to the end of your set. Give yourself a breather. Have a little rest, have a little water, have some aminos, whatever you're using. I boost my aminos with a scoop of collagen. I like it because it's, like I don't even notice it's in there. It's just one extra way for me to get that in my system. All right. Back to our final set of step ups. So uh, you should know what your rep range is at this point. You're probably pretty solid with the amount of weight you've chosen. So it's just a matter of finishing this final set. So let's get in position, grab those weighted objects, put them up on your shoulders or have them by your sides. Get your core tight, shoulders back. I'm gonna start with my left leg this time, stepping up and stepping down. Nice and smooth and controlled, no bouncing, not using any momentum here, I'm taking a little pause in between. And one thing that I'm mindful of here is that my hips might wanna go wonky, shift or swivel, but we wanna be very solid. Use your core stability for that. So engaging your core, bracing your core, however you wanna think about it, will help you keep everything stable. Good work. Complete your reps on your left foot or whichever foot you're on and you're gonna to switch to the other side when you're done. Stepping down and stepping up. Be very mindful of how you're distributing the weight across your foot. Stay light through those toes. Great job. Your heart's working hard here. Just keep breathing. You got this. Oh, that was the last one for me. I'm gonna bend the knees, set the weighted objects off to the side. Oh my gosh. Write down your last set when you're done. We're gonna move on to our last set of chin-ups. Doing amazing. Woo. to move on okay feel free to pause the video or take a little extra rest if you need it we're going to finish this very last set of chin-ups here for me I'm going to step into my assisted band grip the bar palms facing behind me straight body engaged core and I pull and lower fully down, fully extend the arms. You got this. Woo. Okay, I did less in my last set, but I listened to my body. That's where I am today be where you're at. You may be able to even hit more. Just a quick reminder for those of you who are still having a regular cycle. Um, it's in that first stage of your cycle, right from when you bleed until you ovulate, where you're gonna feel more energy, you're gonna be able to push harder. It's because you've got just estrogen as your primary uh, 
hormone in play and it's low at this stage. So this is known as the low hormone phase. Once you hit ovulation, you're still probably gonna feel pretty good, but this is when progesterone peaks because we've released an egg, right? And it's in that second half of your cycle, which happens to be where I am right now, where our energy starts to go down a little bit. Your immune system might feel a little more compromised. I take a booster of zinc during the second half of my cycle. Um, and I also really listen to my body. If I wanna do less reps, do less weight, this is the time when I really do that all the way down, right up until about the week or the few days right before my actual period where I will really back off on my training. So just really pay attention to where you're at if you are still cycling and honor your body's needs. Don't feel like you're supposed to be pushing harder every single week. Um, sometimes you do need to back off. It's one of the cool things about our cycle. If you are post-menopause, you don't have to worry about this cyclical nature. You can really go harder without having to back off um, at a periodic time. However, you do wanna back off in between your workouts. So you wanna be able to really push hard in the workouts that you do and then fully recover. So what you wanna avoid is getting into what we call the gray zone where you're like trying to work out every day, not taking any time off. This will really tank your system and you won't get that stimulus that you need at that stage of your life to help you build muscle. So that's some of the stuff to really think about um, if you are cycling when it comes to your workouts in particular. So we're gonna move on and do our last, very last couple of moves here. Make sure you've recorded your chin-ups. And I'm gonna go ahead, this is the one where you're gonna need two elevated surfaces. So I'm gonna put the elevated surface that I use for my step-ups right in front of my bench. And we're gonna be using this for single leg, ele double elevated, body weight, single leg hip thrusts, which I'm gonna show you. I want you to grab another set of dumbbells. We're gonna be supersetting that with some reverse flies. Just a quick set in between where you're just gonna be sweeping the arms out to the side. And I actually need an even lighter weight set for that. <laughs> that was a good test. So find the appropriate amount of weight for the reverse fly. And let's go ahead and start with that. So we're gonna engage our core, hinge our hips back, shoulders come back and down in their sockets, palms begin facing each other, and then we bring the arms up and back. What you're gonna be thinking about here are the muscles in between your shoulder blades. Eight to 12 is your rep range. Great job. Way to hit it hard. Bend your knees, set down your weighted objects. Just gonna go ahead and record that. Ten, I've got writing down my reps and writing down my weight. And now you've got your double elevation set up. Let's work on how these work. So first and foremost, let's go ahead and set up as if we were gonna do a regular hip thrust. So you've got your back balanced against your elevated surface where the corner of it's just at the base of your uh, scapula. And then you're gonna bring your feet up to an elevated surface. So this is super fun. So why don't you go ahead and try out a couple with both feet down and see if you have the elevated surface far enough away from you. Mine still feels like it's a little bit too close to my body because my knees are like bending up a little too tight. So I'm gonna make myself a little bit more space. Let's go ahead and do a couple more with both feet down. Oh, okay, now I've got that nice 90 degree bend where I feel that spaciousness. Now you can stick with this if this is enough for you, or you can lift up one leg and there's no weight here. We're using gravity alone and we're just gonna hip thrust up with just one foot down. And I want you to try for 10 or more, up to 20, 10 to 20 of these. They're really tough for me too. We have nowhere to go but up. Okay, that was plenty. Oh my gosh, such a hamstring burner. Oh man. When you're ready, you can go ahead and switch to the other leg. 
really pressing down through that heel or the base of your foot. Try to get the same number of reps. You got this. Lower yourself down with control when you're done. And write down your reps. Whew. That one's fun, right? A total butt burner. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go back to our reverse flies. Round two. Doing amazing. Bend the knees. Pick up those weighted objects. Hinge your hips back, core is tight, shoulders back and down in their sockets, and we fly the arms up. Nice, fairly straight arms, can be a soft bend in your elbow. <sighs> Don't swing the arms up like this. You wanna have just the right amount of weight so that you're able to do this using your back muscles. <sighs> <sighs> Rear delts are also helping here. Last one for me, feel free to finish up your set. Bend the knees to set down your weights and write down your reps. Getting ready to go back to those single leg hip thrusts. <clears throat> of course, if you don't have the double setup available, do single leg hip thrusts with just your back elevated and maybe consider adding um, a dumbbell to your hip crease to add a little extra challenge. The um, elevation just makes it so much harder. <laughs> um, so you can you know, meet that same challenge by doing it with your feet on the floor with a weight in your hip crease. All of these forms of training are valid. Use what you got. All right. Once again, I'm gonna set up, bring my back up against my elevated surface, put both feet up onto my, ele my second elevated surface, do one or two just test lifts. And this time I'm gonna start with my right leg, straightening out my left and lifting up, squeezing through that glute. 10 is the minimum here. I want you to go 10, between 10 and 20 reps for this one. Got this. Stay focused. Switch legs when you're ready. That's when you feel like you can barely do two more. reps. Woo. All right. So good. How you feeling? Finish up your set. If you're still going, when you're done, you can write down your reps. Hydrate. Last set of reverse flies coming our way. Let's go ahead and bend the knees to pick up our weighted objects and shoulders back and down in their sockets. Engage that core. Send the hips back, keeping the back straight and strong. Fly the arms out to the side, feeling the muscles between your shoulders. Engage. Eight to 12 reps. Head and neck are neutral. Core is engaged. You got this.
When you're done, bend your knees, set down your weighted objects, record your reps. That was your last set. We have one final move to go and you're done with today's workout. Fantastic work today. Whew. All right. I'm feeling it. <laughs> I'm feeling it. Oh. One thing you may notice if you are in that same second half of your cycle after ovulation is your basal body temperature is going to be a little elevated, which can impact your sleep. So do everything you can to get to bed on time, have a cool space to sleep in without distractions or interruptions so that you can really fully recover. Let's go ahead and set ourselves back up. Brace your back up against your elevated surface. Bring your feet up against your second elevated surface. Both feet give a couple of test reps here just to check yourself. And then choose which foot you want to lead with. Extend the other leg, lower down, and press up using the strength of your glutes, feeling your hamstrings activate as well. You can pl place your hands behind your head and neck if you like, you can place them on the bench, whatever feels supportive. Try for 10 minimum here, go to up to 20. Great job. If you're doing um, this on the floor with a single leg and a dumbbell, eight to 12 is a good rep range to be in for that version. <sighs> Switch when you're ready. This is your last, last sequence. You're in the final countdown now, just doing amazing. <sighs> Remember to thank your awesome body <sighs> for everything it's doing to support you. Count it down, come on. Try to match the same number of reps on both legs. <sighs> Squeeze and lift. <sighs> oh man. Walk it down safely when you're done supporting yourself. Oh my goodness. <sighs> Record your reps when you're done. Great job. We're gonna go ahead and do some self-care. Stretch it out first. I'm gonna clean up my station just like we would if we were in the kitchen. We wanna clean up and leave ourselves a clean space. So use this quick transition time, couple minutes, clean up your space, and then we will do our self-care stretching, a very essential part of your complete workout when you're lifting heavy like this. How are you feeling? As you're cleaning up your space, scan yourself, scan your body. As you're moving your weights around and putting things away, notice how you can activate and engage your muscles in the same good form that we use when we were lifting. For example, bend the knees, engage the core when picking heavy objects off the floor. Holding a weight in close to your body and bending the knees as you're setting things back down. So not compromising your body or compromising your form as you're moving things in your house it can be just a great way to really capitalize on what you learn in these workouts. I'm going to go ahead and walk it out to a down dog. Join me when you're ready. Enjoy that stretch. Maybe pedal out the feet a little bit here or just lift the hips, drop the head expand out through the finger pads, enjoying this time to cool down, to stretch. <sighs> a couple deep breaths. <sighs> We're gonna bring that left foot up to the outside of our left hand, dropping the back right knee down and enjoying that stretch. Good, a little runner's lunge. You can also let the left leg drop, drop out slightly and then bring it back in, transitioning from a lizard lunge back to a runner's lunge. So leg comes out, leg comes in. Nice. Also, <clears throat> feeling a deep stretch through the front quad of the right leg in this position with the knee drop down. Good. 
Go ahead and curl your right foot under, lift your knee up off the floor, step your left foot back by your right. Go ahead and walk your hands back, then walk them forward, coming into another down dog, sinking your heels down, and walk your right foot up by your right hand, dropping your left knee down onto the mat. Enjoying the stretch, just hang out here for a moment. And then you can go ahead and drop the knee out and bring it in, drop it out and bring it in. Nice. And then just pausing here and tuning into the stretch we feel through the left quad. Breathe into that. Curl your left toe under, lift the left knee off the floor, step your right foot back by your left. Coming into another down dog. Drop it down to your knees. And from here, you're gonna go ahead and lift your left arm up and just sweep it through, bringing your head down to the mat. Coming back up and through, reaching up with the arm and sweeping it under. One more time, sweep it under. Plant your left hand down in front of you, underneath your shoulder, this time right arm. Look up and out, reach it up as far as it wants to go while keeping your back nice and straight, and then reach it under. Lift it up, reach it under. One more time, lift it up, reach it under. Do a couple of cat cows here just for the back. So curl your back up towards the ceiling, look down between your feet, press everything away, and then release your belly down, look up, open up, and again, curl the spine up towards the ceiling, looking down between your feet, press away, look up. Go ahead and sit back on your heels, extend your left foot out in front of you, and lean forward. If this isn't comfortable, if it's hard to sit back on your heels, go ahead and come up to a kneeling position and then lean forward over your leg with a straight leg. Nice little hamstring stretch here. From here, we're gonna come into pigeon. So walk up, bring that left knee out to the side and walk your elbows down, dropping your right knee back down behind you, straightening that leg out and enjoy this stretch for as long as you like. When you're ready, you can walk your hand up, come back into that position that you were in before, bring both knees down, coming back to tabletop. And we're gonna extend out through our right leg this time, sitting back onto the heel or staying up in the tall kneeling position. Bend your head forward over your leg. And then walk yourself forward, coming into that pigeon stretch, drawing the knee out to the side, walking your hands down. And if you did the first workout in this series with me um, the other day, we did some sumo deadlifts and my inner thighs are still really, really feeling that. So the stretch feels so good. I'm just loving this Rock Your Life series. So fun. All right, let's go ahead and just do a quick chest stretch to sort of finalize everything we did for upper body. And then you are done. So we're gonna stand tall, flat elbow, flat wrist up against a wall. Step it forward with the same side leg as the arm we're pulling back, feeling a nice stretch through that front chest. Hanging out here for a few moments. And then we're gonna actually straighten the arm, turn away from it, Bend the knees, and this is actually gonna stretch your biceps a little bit. So this is also a great stretch to add in. When you're done, you can switch to the other arm, doing that 90 degree bend, stepping forward, stretching first the chest. Great job. And then you can push the palm just at your shoulder height, straight arm, turn away. Little bend in the knees, sinking down, feeling a nice pull through that bicep. 
Thank you so much for joining me for today's workout. I know this was a little bit longer than what we usually do. This is just a different style of training and I really enjoy this, this style. Uh, if you're looking for more workouts like this, you can check out my Lioness strength training program where I do go heavier. I use heavier weights, but I show you how to transition into that uh, using things that you might have in a simple home gym like dumbbells and stretchy bands. So that's a great training transitional program that also really packs a strong punch. Inside of Rock Your Life, I've also got several strength training challenges like this that really utilize more heavy equipment. And of course, I show you all the alternatives if you are progressing into that style of training or you like that sort of intermediate training style. It's all good. The only workout that isn't effective is the one you don't do. So all forms of training are valid as long as they fit your lifestyle and you're able to stay consistent with them. I just want to offer you lots of different options since I know we all love variety. I really would love to invite you to take any of my awesome training programs so that I can support you in reaching your strength and fitness goals. And as always, the Team Betty Rocker coaches and myself are there to answer your questions, support you anytime you reach out to us on social media, through our uh, amazing customer support channel, and of course, in our amazing Rock Your Life Women's Fitness community, which is part of the offerings that we have for our members that include challenges, new classes every week, and all of the other bonus goodies that we have in there for you. So please check out all of the offerings as well as all of the free resources and workouts over on the BettyRocker.com blog. This community and all of the offerings that we have for you are just meant to support you wherever you're at and we are here for you. As always, I'm Betty Rocker. You are so awesome and amazing. Thank you so much. I'll see you again real soon.